we did in spite of all that you, all the things we did behind the coaching all the occultic power all the evil power all the political power all the power they we, we, we against this man against this woman see how the lord has magnified him or magnified her you will not weep anymore the tears and the sorrows are now transferred to the enemy they are the people that will weep on your behalf in jesus name he lifted up his voice and he wept and he said unto David, Thou art more righteous than I. It's an enemy talking to David and he said, I know. You are more righteous than I. Did they say they didn't believe in your salvation? This year they will believe in your salvation. Did they say they didn't believe that you are righteous? They say, well, is she not a common sinner? Is she not a common sinner? Don't we know when we're in the primary school, secondary school? They will forget your past. Your present and your future will be so magnified, they'll forget the past in Jesus' name. And then Saul said, You are more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. Thou hast showed this day how that thou hast dwelt well, whereas that well with me, for as much as when the Lord had delivered me to thine hand, thou killest me not. For if a man find his enemy will he let him go well away wherefore the lord reward thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day this is you, this is prayer who was praying here for david i tell i said who was praying here for david you know it's wonderful it's a normal thing if samuel will come and pray for david that's a normal thing if your pastor will come and pray for you that's a normal thing but when your enemy begins to pray for you your enemy that wanted to use all the resources in the nation and then he wanted to follow after you to kill you and to destroy you and that same enemy now turns around and instead of putting a curse upon you he begins to pray for you he even begins to prophesy i, I, I wonder why I, you know choir i think uh, those members are choir I think they became prophets and prophetesses this morning. And they are telling us that there's a prophecy. And actually, they didn't know I didn't tell them my message, but the Lord put that word in their mouth, and the Lord is putting that word in my mouth. There's a prophecy upon your life. I said there's a prophecy upon your life. And that prophecy is going to be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Doesn't the Bible say out of the mouth of two or three witnesses the truth shall be confirmed? Are you in doubt anymore? Doubt your doubt. I said doubt your doubt because there's nothing for you to mistake anymore. They said it and arms, and the word of God is saying it that there's a prophecy upon you. Look at it now. It says in verse 20, and now behold, I know well. Here is Saul. Now, he said, David, listen to me before you go. Because I've been chasing after you. And the thing I've been trying to say is that you will never be a king. I will not live to see David reign over this land. My son Jonathan is the one that ought to reign in this land. The same person that told Jonathan, said, hey, foolish boy, as long as this David is alive, you'll never be able to ascend to the throne. Let's kill him. Get rid of him so that this David, when he's gone, then you will be king. It is the same man that now is giving this prophecy to David and said, and now behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king. I know very well. There's no, there's no shadow of doubt in my heart that David is going to be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Here is Saul saying that at his own time, Saul, the kingdom of Israel will not be established. He's saying that I know I am not the person to come and establish the kingdom, but I know you, David. I choose you to be an enemy. I'll be targeting your life. I want you to get rid of you, but I want to prophesy to you today. He said, David, listen to me. Whatever Samuel told you, I don't know. But I am telling you that I have tried you this way and this way and this way to get rid of your life, and it is impossible. How can you have how can you kill a man? How can you kill a woman that has a commission from heaven? This man has a commission from heaven. I'm looking at a man in front of me. I'm looking at you here today. I'm looking at a woman there that has a commission from heaven. I said you have a commission from heaven. And who can kill you, can destroy you before that commission from heaven is ever fulfilled? Your enemy will make the prophecy real. 
and they will talk about because it is a prophetic day for a great future and here comes a soldier and said i know it very well there's no shadow of doubt that you will be king over this land and that the kingdom of israel shall be established in your hand it is done in jesus name i'm looking at jeremiah chapter one jeremiah chapter one you know that today this is a prophetic day for you for your great future jeremiah chapter one i'm reading there from verse 18 it says for behold i have made thee what are those words there now this day everybody say this day that's what I'm telling you. It's a special day. It's a unique day. It's a peculiar day. And the Lord is saying, I've made you this day a defense city and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land and against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, and against the priesthood thereof, and against the people of the land. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. Look at what the Lord is telling you this day. He says, don't worry about what you see. They may conspire together. All that conspiracy, the Lord is going to scatter them in Jesus' name. You know, they may have a private meeting together. Let's meet behind that other place. Let's meet in this other place and plan. And then we're going to get rid of that man. We're going to fight against him. And all he wanted to do, all he's thinking he's going to do this year. It's a new year, new year. This year is going to be worse than all the past years. And I say, Satan is a liar. Over your life, Satan is a liar. Over your life, all those demons are liars in Jesus' name. It says, I'm going to scatter them. Everybody say, scatter. It will scatter them in Jesus' name. Here is what it says. They shall fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. He will deliver you in Jesus' name. The Lord is saying that all his intention for you this year, all his promises for you this year, there is nothing ca that can stop you because this peculiar day and this special day is a prophetic day that tells us about a great future. It will be known in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Psalm 68. Psalm 68. I'm reading from verse 30. Psalm 68. We're looking at verse 30. It says, rebuke the company of spare men, the multitude of the, the the multitude of the bulls with the calves of the people till everyone submit himself in the, with pieces of silver. You are going to read that last part that remains now in Bastachi. Won't you go? Scattered out the people that delight in war. All the people that are trying to, you know, make war against your life and then oppress your life. And then they have all that conspiracy. The Lord is saying, it's going to scatter them and it will scatter them in Jesus' name. Because the Lord himself is saying, this is the day, the day, the prophetic day for your great future. And the greatness of the future is starting from this prophetic day in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 19 there. Haggai chapter 2. The Lord is telling us that this is what he's expecting in your life, and it will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Haggai chapter 2, Haggai chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 19, is the seed yet in the barn, in the barn, yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree. And then it says, and the promegnanate and the olive tree has not brought forth from this day, from this day, from this day, will I bless you. You have received the message from our pastor. Pastor W. F. Kumoye, the General Superintendent of the Parallel Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your hearts. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our, our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O oh Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week and the one we are going to listen to the next week by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. If you tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us 
will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.